I'm usually complaining about clanky vanilla tools in Blender not being up to par with add-on workflow because add-ons are so powerful and save you so much time, which is true. However, Blender surprised me recently and the version 5.0 is going to be coming up with some cool tools and one of them is absolutely amazing. Let me show you. So the tool I'm talking about is going to be the new array and if you don't know the new array, whoo, you're up for some good proper fun. So let me put it this way. This array in Blender Vanilla is blowing Hardops array out of the water. And that's the first time I've said it in six years about any tool in Vanilla Blender. So let me show you because it's, it's, it's a picture. So first of all, you can select two different arrays. This is bullshit. Don't use it. It's the old one. Use this one. That's the new one. So let's pop it in. Now, let me just expand it so you can see the full, you know, the full picture. So first of all, we have two gizmos, one and two, and we have four different arrays. So we have line, circle, curve, and transform. Now, these two gizmos, so the first one, if you hover over this arrow and pull it, you're gonna be changing the offset value of the offset method. In our case, it's relative, which is by default set relative. You can also change the scale and rotate, okay, the elements. Now this one is going to be changing the count. So if I move it, it's going to be changing the count of the following the pattern here. So in our case, rotation. Now you will notice that the rotation scale and everything is actually being amplified the further you, you know, the further away you go in deeper into the array, right? So the, these pieces become more violently rotated and larger. So if you want to rotate something on a uniform axis, what you want to do is you want to instead let me show you, right? You want to instead um, do this in edit mode. So go to the first cube, edit mode, R, Y, and do it this way, okay? So then you're gonna be able to actually, you know, rotate it uh, using uh, the edit mode and the rotation is gonna be uniform, right? Because if you, uh, you know, if you're on top of this, use one of these rotations, things gonna uh, become less uniform, right? So again, the amplification is gonna happen. So that's how it works. Now, that's the very basic use of this line array but you know there are a few more interesting things here i want to show you so let's just nuke this and get a clean one so you don't have a clean picture and let's just pop this in and you know make it a bit larger uh, maybe not that large increase the count there we go let's talk about offset if i'm going to set this to one what's going to happen is going to be no gap in between the objects because now we are offsetting by the value of one which means by the size of an object which means the distance between these cube but cubes at the moment is zero now if i'm going to set it to 1.1 because my cube is two meters the gap here is going to be 0.1 of the value which means which means it's going to be 20 centimeters okay that's 10 percent of two meters so uh that's how the relative offset works now the offset offset method which is kind of weird way of naming this it's very common for people with cats if you're going to offset it by two meters, nothing's going to happen because you're offsetting it by the amount or the size of an object itself. If you offset it by 2.2 meters, you're going to have the same offset as the previous array because it's going to be 20 centimeters. See how it works? So that's the offset offset method. Now the end point, you, you need to define the start and end point of the array. So kind of like, a, you know, um, from two, right? So let's say we have 10 meters, right? So the gizmo is going to jump to 10 meters and then, you know, you're going to be able to adjust the count in between these two, uh, to um, the start point and the end point. Okay. So these two cubes and that's how it works. So that's a very simple explanation of the line method. And then obviously you can, you know, transform it here. You can rotate it. You can, you can scale it. You can do all kinds of crazy stuff, right? Which is really cool. Let's look at the circle array because this one is also really interesting. So now circle array was an absolute bastard in Vanilla Blender before that because you had to set an, an empty and then uh, use the uh, displace modifier to create a circle array. No more, it's very easy. All you do is use this gizmo to displace it and this gizmo to drive the number of, of these cubes and you're done, right? 
but it gets more interesting. You can also change the orientation to all the axes, and you know the gizmos are still here, which is you know you can change whatever the hell you want. And in addition, you can switch it from full circle to an arc, and then determine you know the and the angle here, or you can use this wheel here, holding control to snap to five degree uh, increment. So you can do it too. And then obviously you still have the control here over the displays. And if you want to change the count amount, you need to go here, right? Cool. Now, next one is going to be distance, which is a really interesting one. You'll have two gizmos, right? This one in the middle is going to be the count of objects in the array. And the one outside is going to be determining the sweep angle. So there you go. That's how it works. And this one's going to be for displacing. So you have quite a lot of, you know, um, quite a lot of options here for this array. And this one is really powerful and I'm, you know, I'm, I'm going to be definitely using that one. Now, next one is really, really cool. This one is curve array, and this one used to be an absolute bitch in Blender Vanilla. Now, I was using hard ups for it when you drop a curve and you just assign an array to a curve, but it was a bit fiddly because the order of modifier mattered and it's, you know, and so on and so forth. And also where you place the curve, how you place the curve, you know, the, where the origin point of the curve was, it was all important. And in this case, it's just you know, amazing, like they, they did a fantastic job on this one. So it's so intuitive. So let's grab a curve and I'm just going to put it somewhere here and rotate it and scale it, you know, no problem. And I'm going to switch here from line to curve. Now the array is going to disappear. I think it's a bug because it shouldn't just disappear. But um, now you need to determine where you want to assign this array to. So you need to find the curve. So let's grab this selector and click on a curve and boom. Array is going to just jump to a curve and fill the whole curve automatically, which is just freaking cool. And you can change the you know amount of uh, segments or the count of these cubes here. And you don't have to go to this, you know, to this um, modifier tab at all. Now, cool thing is that you can rotate or scale this curve and the array is going to follow. And in addition, you can also duplicate it. Now, if you duplicate it in object mode, it will not do anything but if you duplicate in edit mode, so I'm going to grab one of these verts of the uh, of the curve and shift D that you can see the array follows it. So if I'm going to extrude it now, you see that uh, my array is going to be following it. And if I'm going to go back and click here and, you know, change the count, um, you see, it's going to adjust on this curve as well. You can even determine how many cubes you want per curve so you can do it per curve so seven per curve or seven in total right so that's how it works that's a curve method which is which is really awesome now let's talk about the last one which is going to be transform and to show you this one i think what i should do is duplicate this array here and i'm going to apply a regular line array here and we're going to apply another array here switch it to transform now transform is a little bit different because uh, when you're going to for example scale this one uh, on z axis by two you will see that the progression is going to be very gradual right now if you're going to scale this one by two the progression is going to be way more way more violent okay so you see the the transformation is a little bit different in addition to what you can do you can run the transformation based off of an object. So if you switch here to object, you can run an empty. So let's just uh, grab, uh, where is it? Empty, right? And we're going to assign this to an empty. And now you can use this empty to drive not just the array, but also the scale, rotation, and everything. So you can do stuff like this, for example, right? Which is really cool. So if you're going to increase the uh, the count here, we're going to get this, right? So bonkers stuff, right? Bonkers stuff. Let's just nuke this. So let me show you something else. This is another feature that's really interesting. So let's, uh, let's grab this array here and let's maybe run a regular line array. Uh, let's uh, make it a little bit larger, not, not, not scale it. I want to make it a bit larger here. There we go. And then increase the count here. Maybe not as large. Whoops. There we go. And then let's switch it to transform. And let's let me just expand this here. There we go. 
Let's grab this empty again here. So plain axis. And we're gonna switch to object and empty. And just grab it on X axis. There we go. Now the empty is still here. So the empty, if I'm gonna go Alt Z, the empty is here. Now watch. What I can do is I can curve this array around the empty. So R, Y, and watch this. How cool is that, right? In addition to this, what you can now start doing, you can start, you know, transforming the array, right? So we in transform, but we can randomize it. So let's go here. And we can randomize the offset, right? On multiple axes, we can randomize the rotation right and also the scale and you can actually go here to axes and you can change the scale on multiple axes right so you can do stuff like that now the flipping doesn't work i think it's still bugged because it's still in beta but uh, you know this is pretty cool it looks like a broken portal or something you know you can create like asteroid belts a mess in your room a shelf of books or whatever, you know, some kind of rubble or explosions. So many applications of this is crazy, right? So that's really cool. In addition, you can exclude the first and the last object here so of the array. So if you wanted to, you can exclude them. In addition, you can change the seed of this randomization so you can do it as well. Now, the last option is merge here and merge, you know, what merge is gonna do, so let's just grab another cube and I'll show you. I don't think it's that useful, but could be could be interesting. Um let's go here and you know create an array like this and let's scale them on y axis and also on x axis. And you see if I'm gonna enable merge and I'm gonna start changing the distance, it kinda works like a like a weld modifier, you know what I mean? That's how it works. So it could be useful in certain cases, but you're still gonna have to clean up the mesh because even if I apply this, right, you're gonna end up with a lot of nonsense. So probably gonna have to use something like 3D print toolbox or clean mesh from hard ops or whatever, right, to clean that up, but you know, it's a tool. But anyway, this array I think is fantastic and I'm stoked for this to come up. It's one of the coolest tools in Vanilla Blender by far, especially, you know, recently. And, uh, and I'm so pleasantly surprised that they finally working on something that's actually fucking useful, right? I know the geonodes are useful, I get that. I know that I had to change the auto smooth, but it's still goddamn annoying. This one isn't annoying, this one is actually fucking useful. So I'm seeing myself using this. Now, if we had Pi menu for this, or like shortcut keys like we have in hard ops, whew, this would be dangerous, man. And it's already is dangerous, but it would be like on a different level, you know. So what we need is kind of like an ability to add shortcuts to specific features. Now, the last thing is I'm going to tell you, but you probably know that you can add keyframes to all these values so you can actually use it for animation, which is really cool, right? So there you go. That's an array. And, you know, Blender is full of gems like this. I mean, full of it, right? There's a lot of tools, add-ons, tricks and, you know, approaches and workflows and all that. And it's impossible for everyone to know everything and if you need to blender intermediate or you're just transitioning or if you're professional using blender you may have a lot of questions and you may need help so perhaps we can help you so what we can do we can hop on a call and have a quick chat and see if we can actually help you with what you need so if you're interested click on the link in the video description book a call with us and we're gonna see you there that's it for the video thanks for watching guys and i'll see you in the next one